How's it going? My name's Josh. I'm a representative here from Open Source Steel. Today, I'm here to talk to you about five corners not to cut when you first get into extraction. The first is, of course, the ultimate rule, and that's safety. So for today, I'll have a fire extinguisher nearby. I have this safety first aid kit close. I'm also wearing safety glasses and a nice lab coat to keep me clean. Then, we'll want to have safety of the system by checking it for pressure and for vacuum. This ensures that there's no leaks in the equipment prior to use because, of course, we're going to be using flammable, combustible solvents. So now that we got safety out of the way, let's talk about the extraction corners you should not cut. The first thing to consider is your solvent choice. You want to make sure you're purchasing from reliable suppliers and that your gas is of medical grade, meaning 99.95 purity and above. The tanks that these come from in the manufacturer are generally carbon steel, which is also something to note. Carbon steel can rust due to mistreatment, moisture, and there's other impurities that can get trapped in these tanks. So after you purchase your gas, you want to make sure that you're distilling your gases before use. Distilling is the process of evaporating the solvent from this vessel or another vessel, and that will remove any of the transfer oils or lubricants that are used to move solvents from the manufacturer into this tank. During the distilling process, you also want to store in some sort of sanitary vessel like this stainless steel tank here. It's stainless steel, which will ensure that there's no rust, and there's also a nice opening on top, which we can clean out at any point. Now that we have our clean solvent, let's move on to step two. Number two is cold solvent and cold material are going to lead to a better end result. More terps and just overall better colors. The reason is, is we're going to remove as much impurities as possible, like water and moisture, fats and phospholipids. This is especially true for products like live resin, where the plant is fresh and there's a lot of water content. So we'll use a chiller or dry ice to keep our solvent and our material columns cold the one downside is that it may lower the vapor pressure of your solvent, requiring a nitrogen pressure assist, but you can watch our video on our YouTube to see more details. Let's move on to step three. Number three, molecular sieve. Why is sieve so important? Well, it will absorb any moisture that might get by during the extraction process or be stored in our solvent tank. It'll be placed inside of a molecular sieve tube like this on your extraction and all gases will pass by these beads before going and returning to your tank. These 3A beads can be actually recharged, so you can put them in the oven for 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and that will make sure to evaporate any moisture that is collected in these, and they can be reused. Before you begin to reuse them, make sure though, you store them in an airtight place so no moisture from the air soaks up in your beads. Next, let's move on to number four. Now number four is pump maintenance. This is something I see my customers neglecting quite often, to be honest. They take their pumps hundreds and hundreds of hours before they open them up and clean them out. Now, like I told you earlier, the solvents that we buy from our suppliers, they have lubricants in there from the transfer process. Those lubricants are used to lubricate the pistons of the recovery pumps like we're using today. After we remo remove those lubricants, they generally work a little bit harder and they run a little hotter, which wears out the parts and components faster. So to help with that, cleaning out your pumps often and frequently will help get all the gunk, carbon buildup, or anything that might get by into your pump, and obviously keep them nice and fresh for the next time to use them. So make sure you're cleaning your pumps. Let's talk about step five. All right, now final one, number five, is organization, or as I like to call it, feng shui. Make sure you've got a nice, adequate workspace to be in. You're not going to be tripping over cables or wires. You've got a nice prep area in case you need to pack or unpack material columns. You have your safety supplies, of course, like we talked earlier, your garbage, your cleaning supplies. Make sure you have all tools handy that you might need during the process in case you need to tighten up a connection point, in case there's any leaks, it could happen. The idea here is to make your life easy, not hard. The extraction process can sometimes be convoluted and complicated, and once you begin, there's no real stopping. So try to be as prepared as possible, clean up your workspace, and of course, have fun. That's it for the five corners not to cut when doing extraction. We'll see you on the next video. 
Now, before we get out of here, I want to give a special shout out to Pat Raphael for suggesting this video here. In an earlier YouTube video, he commented, hey, could you let us know some corners not to cut when you first get into extraction? So we made this video here. Really, we boiled it down from a bunch of different points to five of the most important we think here at Open Source Steel. So hopefully that's answered your questions, Pat. And if any of you else out there watching this video have a suggestion for a video you wanna see, comment down below, let us know. We'll try to make it happen for you. And until then, of course, like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.